Today we're going to go over a bunch of different ways you can drill accurately in the shop and maybe not so accurately, but first let's get started. Now, the first part of the job should start out with the layout die if it's going to be accurate. Unfortunately for this video, I didn't have any more of it, but there is a good substitute. You can use regular paint laid on very lightly. The only difference is it's going to take a little bit more time to dry. One of the first things that you're going to do if you're laying everything out is make sure everything's square. If your reference lines aren't going off of something square, you're not going to get anything that's square. Now, you're going to notice I'm using vernial calipers. I wouldn't recommend doing this with your good set. This set that you see here are kind of a secondary set. These are used for layout specifically and never anything super accurate. Now, if you're going to lay this out with a set that aren't your frontline set of calipers and are used specifically for kind of rougher jobs like this, it's pretty darn easy. You're just basically going to set it to the dimension that you want and you're going to make sure that you drag it parallel along the side of the material. The key here is to remember, take your time laying stuff out and you're going to get more accurate stuff. If you're in a rush and you're not going to take the time, you're not going to get the results that you're hoping for. Now, in this demonstration here, I probably should have taken a little bit more time to clean up some of the burrs on those edges, but that's okay because this is just for demonstration. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go to a sharp pointed punch. Now, the reason why we're going to a sharp pointed punch here is we want to see really closely where we're getting in with this punch. This is going to really improve our accuracy and make sure we get it where we want it. Now, after we've laid everything out, we can always double check and go back and move the points if we made a mistake. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go with the calipers and I'm going to measure the center of the pin punch and make sure that the holes are pretty much where I want them. Like I just said, this is the time that we want to make sure that we get it laid out just right because once we go a little bit further into this, it's going to be harder to come back from this. Now, I'm just going to move this hole over just a little bit here and it's as simple as just kind of pushing it off to the side and punching it in the direction that you want it to go. Generally, this will get you kind of within five or 10 thou and that's kind of what we're going for here today. Next, we're coming back with the 60 degree pin punch and we're just widening up these holes. Now, widening up those holes is important because it's going to let our center drill kind of find its own home and get it right where we want. It. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a drill press, just a milling machine, but it all works the same. We want to make sure that we're not drilling holes in the table and there's relief behind wherever we're drilling. And needless to say, we want to avoid drilling holes in our machinery at all costs. Personally, I think it's pretty embarrassing to have little peck marks in the tables and it's going to ruin your accuracy down the road. Now, this type of drilling isn't really the super recommended way of doing it. Generally, I'm going to put a button stop in there to stop from doing the helicopter death spin of doom, but it doesn't necessarily always stop it from doing that. The professional way to do it would be to make sure you line it up and bolt this down absolutely firm to make sure this isn't going to spin. But this is the way I do it. You do it the way you want to do it. And keep in mind, your safety is your responsibility. Using a center drill like this is the very first step in accuracy. This step is not going to have any flex and it's going to find the home that you just pin punched in there and it's not going to wander off to the left or right. Next comes the drilling piece. I'm going to shy away from the drawer of drills and stick with my Cleland but I do also have Magnum and some drill hogs that I do use from time to time. And I do like those three brands. What we're gonna to do today is we're gonna take two different drill bits. We're gonna take one undersize. We're gonna drill to three eighths and then we're gonna go just under one size. And we're gonna go undersize first, of course, because that's gonna give us our pilot hole and then come back through with the three eighths and finish up drilling everything. And that's gonna give us the most accurate drill hole size. One thing I do like about the Cleelands that I have here is they've already got three sides ground, so that it's going to fit your drill chuck and not slip in the drill chuck. A lot of accuracy can be lost just through kind of it spinning in the chuck and gouging up and then not quite going on center. Now it's just a matter of coming back and holding onto that plate in such a way that if it loosens up and starts doing the helicopter spin of death, I'm not going to lose a finger. Some of the most common injuries, in my opinion, come from the drill press. Now, the drill press is kind of just under-respected. Let's take a look why, and then we'll kind of evaluate what we could have done better.
That's right. Okay, although I got off lucky here, there's something to be learned from my mistake as well. A, I shouldn't be doing it this way. And B, if I was doing it this way, I needed to hold it down a lot tighter because as soon as it breaks through, there's going to be a bird that's going to want to pull up and take the work all the way up the spiral with it. I'm pretty sure a lot of the machinists, millwrights, and all the like of the shop guys out there can attest to this experience that I just had here. And it's a good way to get hurt. What we could have done better is we could have clamped this right down to the table and made sure that didn't ride up. Now we're going to come through the actual 3-8 size, because remember, we were drilling one size under. And we're just going to let it kind of find its home, and then we're just going to gently push it through. Now remember, just before it goes through, it's going to want to lift this plate up and do the helicopter spin of death. Now, if you don't know about this trick here for finding center on holes, measuring the distance between center to center, this is a trick for you. First, what we're going to do here is we're going to measure the hole size, then we're going to zero it, and it's going to give you your center to center distance. Now, it's kind of like magic and voodoo, but really, it works really good each time. Now, let's inspect our layout work and see how we did. Looks like there I'm 9 thou out between the center of the holes. Let's take a look at this other one here. And these are pretty much bang on. I mean, I'm within 6 thou, 5 thou there. And that's just from laying it out by hand. So one of the other jobs that frequently comes in is there'll be a plate that needs a hole drilled on all four corners. So what I've done here is I've already drilled one hole an inch in and an inch up from one of the corners. And I'm going to lay this jig down to hold it in place. Now I'm making sure a lot of the jig points that are touching the metal are going to be points. Now, I don't want a flat surface because if the flat surface is there, I'm going to get little burrs and junk mixed in there and it's going to move that plate off kilter. Now that I bolted it down, I'm just going to make sure one more time that every time I put it in there, it's going to go in the same exact spot. This is probably going to get you, depending upon how much time you take, somewhere between 10 to 30 thou. And for something like this, it's going to be more production and less about accuracy. Say something like a railing or something that you want to bolt four corners down. You're going to weld this, say, to the bottom of a pedestal. And then you're just going to bolt it down later and drill the holes in place. Once again, it's only going to get you an inch in and an inch up. If that plate's a different size, you're going to have different sizes from hole to hole. And voila, I mean, I'm not even using any center drilling here. I'm just going for gusto, just with the drill bit. Now, you probably could improve your accuracy a little bit more by center drilling each hole. Or, you know, another way you could do this is you could go really slow, easing into the drill bit, just to get the hole started. Now, one of the problems that you'll have with losing accuracy is that long drill bit will kind of want to wander off onto its own little part and then start drilling. And you've got to be really careful with a setup like this because if that drill bit wanders off a little bit too far, you're going to end up breaking that drill bit, and there's a whole bunch of sadness that follows with that. Now, I'm just going to comparatively measure each side just to kind of see how much they're out. And you know what? It's pretty much good enough for the girls I go out with, and it's going to be good enough for a lot of those simple jobs that just have to get done rapidly and get them out the door. Now, let's look at another job that we do on the milling machine and see what we can get out of that. So one of the keys that's really important to getting a good job done is having a good, decent light. Now, KBC Tools is cool enough to give me this one here, but you know, really whatever works for you that's gonna give you light to see where you're working is super important. It's gonna actually increase your accuracy. So one of the first steps that we're gonna to have to do here is we're gonna to have to find zero in this corner because all of our parts are referencing out from zero. Now, in our blueprint that we had before, we had one inch in, one inch in, and I believe it was three inches up. And then I think, let's say two inches up. Okay, so let's just write that down here and let me show you how to do that. For a more descriptive video on edge finding, check out the notes below. Now, if we were going for absolute accuracy, we'd have a machine surface along the side here and a machine surface along the other side. But today we're just using some scrap. So there might be some variations in kind of how it goes down but I'm pretty sure you get the kind of the idea of what we're looking at here. So the first thing that we're gonna do here is I'm gonna find the edge off the right hand side. Let's turn the milling machine on and see how this goes. So 
So I'm gonna bring it up to the edge where it stops wiggling. And then I'm just gonna go a little bit more. And you kind of see how it feeds away there. Now, as soon as it kind of walks up there a little bit, going slow, we can zero everything and we know we're on edge. Then we can unlock everything, bring it up, and then we bring it over 100 thou because that center is 200 thou round. That's half of that. And we know we're on edge. Now, it's just a matter of bringing it over to the other edge and repeating the same step. Okay, we got ourselves a center drill. Pop the center drill in here. Now it's just a matter of moving it over one inch in each direction and drilling that hole. Now the center drill doesn't have to go all the way through. It doesn't have to even have a chamfer on it. I mean, a chamfer would be nice to kind of center the drill in there, but really it's just a guide hole. But now it's easy now, it just is moving over the three inches. Okay, which is actually four inches because it's one inch here and then there's three inches apart. Check to make sure I got nothing underneath there. Looking pretty good. Okay, now we'll come over here. Back to the two inches. A one inch off. Now we wanted that hole two inches apart, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up there, if you can kind of see it up there. I'm actually gonna go to three inches because remember we got that one inch offset here and we want two inches in between. Then we're just gonna plunge the hole. Nice and easy does it. You don't wanna to push too hard. Or you're gonna start getting things kind of flexing and walking the other way. And now one of our next steps is gonna be is we're gonna grab the drill bits like we did before. We're gonna do one size under, drill it, and then we're gonna drill it to size. I highly, highly recommend to you, if this is super important that you can't mess up and it has to be a perfect hole, grab a piece of scrap, kind of like what we're working with today, and drill the hole first and measure to make sure you got the right hole size. If that drill bit's not sharp, if, say, it's a little bit harder of a material, say you grab the wrong drill bit, you're gonna find out when you do the scrap material drill and it's not gonna be in the important work that you now, gotta do. for the next job, of course we could drill things with big spade drill bits, but that's probably not gonna be really beneficial for everyone because it's gonna work pretty much the same as everything else. Now, say we have a scenario where we need to drill a, a hole over top of a hole. We're gonna use an annular bit. Now, if you've never seen an annular bit before, it's basically for mag drill. Now, the really cool part about this drill bit is it uses a lot less horsepower, except you need to make sure you hold your work down really tight. Now we're gonna make sure we use the right cutting speed for this, which is gonna be a lot slower than you're expecting. And we're gonna put lots of oil in this because these are a bit of a bitch to sharpen. But like I said, there's the added feature of this, once you've got it all laid out, is you can drill over top of a hole. Now, say you missed your hole and you need to drill right next to it or put in a plate or whatever your problem is, this is gonna be a really cool function for you down the road in the shop. And in the end, it gives you this really cool fangly dangly plug. I don't know what we're gonna do with it. <laughs> Probably end up throwing it into the scrap pile. But in the end, our work, we actually have a cool little key shape in the actual steel plate. Now, following off of that, it's kind of the same, but a little bit different. There's kind of the tree panning idea. I think that's the proper way of saying it. Tray panning, French perhaps. Now, what we're gonna use is, we're gonna use a single cutter to do the work that we're gonna need to do. Now, with this whole thing here is, there's a big trick to grinding this tool bit. You're gonna want reliefs on the inside and more relief on the outside as well, because that's kind of spinning around in a circle. There's gonna be a little more relief on the outside that you're gonna expect. There's a lot of experimentation in here. So if you need to do this job, pick a scrap piece of steel and practice at it a bunch of times. The only thing I can highly recommend is rigidity. Everything's gonna to need to be absolutely tight for you to do this. The table, the vise, everything in between, or you're gonna start having problems with that work moving around. Now eventually, it's gonna pop through just like it did here, and you're gonna to wanna to go a little bit further past. Kind of like a boring operation, it's gonna give you a better service finish on the outside and give you the exact hole size that you wanted. 
Now, if you're a little bit more, I don't know, high speed, low, low drag, kind of mill rate-ish, and you got to get the job done, this is probably a little bit more your speed. Now, it's not as accurate, but it's perhaps some of the times way overlooked by guys out in the shop. Say you got to cut a hole for like a drive shaft going through the side of a machine. The torch might actually be one of the options that you're going to have. If you have a steady hand, a good set of torches, and a bit of time to take, you actually can make it a little bit more precise than you would expect. Torches have a really bad rap, say because people don't know how to use them or they don't have the practice. And originally I used to be that way as well. And then I went out in the field and started using torches and I actually got quite a bit better at them. And you can actually make a pretty decent looking hole. You know, say you're, you're not really gonna be fitting anything super accurate up to it, but in the end you can touch this up say with a die grinder and no one would ever know that you cut it with a torch. But needless to say, it's not the most accurate way of doing things, and it's going to need a bit of cleanup. Let's have a closer look at this. You see, it's not as actually bad as you're probably expecting when you saw that torch light up, and it's just because you go really steady with your hand, and you can make a steady cut. So, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, no, I want to cut a hole that's a lot more accurate than that out in the field. Now, I've got a solution for you, and that's the mag drill. So one of the ones I found really useful for drilling anything from kind of small holes to bigger holes up to like two, two and a half inches is a mag drill. Now, if you haven't used one of these before, it's a game changer, like <laughs> complete game changer for being out in the field. Now, they're really easy to operate. And not only that, if you take the time to lay it out, it can be pretty accurate. And let me show you how. Now, remember your regular spray paint is gonna work kind of similar to having layout dye. You just gotta put it on really thin and key, make sure that you take the time to let it dry. It's not gonna work as well if it's still wet and tacky. Now, we're gonna take our junky set of veneer calipers. We're gonna do the punching method like we did before, except this time here, our mag drill actually has a little pointer in it and it's gonna line up with that hole. Now, you probably could do it by eye without doing a center punch, but this is probably the easiest way I find to do this job. Your next step, that's right, we're going to use a little bit of cutting oil and a good ventilated area. Make sure our magnet's on. <laughs> Some of the models don't actually have a magnet pick out on it, so it will run without a magnet on. And then we're just going to kind of take our time and cut the hole. Now, some of this is sped up. It does take a bit more time, obviously but it's gonna give us a good finished product in the end. Let's have a look. So there you pretty much have it. We've got a pretty darn good looking hole. We're probably re reasonably accurate. Let's have a measurement on it and see how accurate this annular cutter cut. And it's not even a really sharp annular cutter too. So let's have a look. So, and the cool part is I've got this really cool little plug here. Maybe I'll turn it into a washer, or turn it back in for steel scrap. But let's have a measure and see how big this hole actually is. So what's this? Uh, 1.635 thou, give or take. Well, one some. of the things that I forgot to mention here is it actually spit the plug out pretty good here, but on normal annular cutters, this, uh, this little plug here, normally when you bring it back up, something on the inside will kind of push it out a little bit and then it kind of goes back to the where it should be. So, I mean, today I'm just manually taking it and out. Let's take it off and we'll have a quick look. Okay. Yeah, simply there's just a plug here. And you know what? Maybe it's just gravity that that just kind of falls down with so you can line up your holes. But I think there's also supposed to be kind of a punch out. When it comes up, it pushes that plug out. 